Hi, I'm Brad Jensen, and today we're going to talk about how to restore an IBM I library with RST Lib and UBD. In order to access the UBD library on the IBM I, we add it to our library list with the command add library list entry UBD. You see that the UBD library has been added to the library list. To bring up the UBD command menu, enter Go UBD menu. The UBD command menu lists the seven simple UBD commands that you can use on your IBM I. The work UBD command is used to load a tape image into UBD. This is the same as loading a tape cartridge into a tape drive. The work UBD command takes two parameters, dev and tape image. The dev or device parameter is used to specify the backup device. This would be a tape drive, or in this case, the UBD equivalent of a tape drive. We can view all the tape devices on our IBM I by entering the command work configuration status with the associated parameters. Even though UBD is actually a Windows Server appliance, it appears to the IBM I as a regular tape device. Everything you can do with a regular tape drive, you can do with UBD. We will be using TAP UBD0. When UBD is connected to the IBM I, its setup is handled automatically by the IBM I as if it was just another tape device. So we enter TAPUBD0 for the DEV or device parameter. The TAPIMG or tape image name parameter is used to specify the tape image. This is the name that the tape image has on the UBD appliance. We can easily find the tape image we want by looking at UBD's simple but robust web interface. Let's select the first tape device on the appliance, Tape 0. UBD can optionally support up to eight tape devices on one appliance. Each tape device can be attached to a different IBM I host or LPAR, or to a Linux or Windows host or VM. Here we see a list of all the tape images stored on Tape 0. A UBD tape folder can be sized dynamically to fit as many or few images as are required. Tape images are stored as window files and may be compressed, encrypted, or deduplicated. Let's select the Brad 1 tape image. This is like selecting a tape cartridge and putting it in the drive. We enter Brad 1 for the tape image parameter for the work UBD command. Pressing F9, we see the command as it would be entered directly on the command line. UBD commands are easy to integrate into IBM CL scripts. Having run the UBD command, we can see on the web interface that the Brad 1 tape image has been successfully mounted. We run the restore lib command from the command line to restore the RIC test library from the Brad 1 tape image that has been mounted using the work UBD command. We will give the restored library a new name, A-Test. We are informed that the restore went smoothly. UBD's lightning fast restore speeds are one of the reasons customers prefer it to regular tape. Here we see the A-Test library has been successfully restored to our system. As you can see here, you can use UBD just like a tape drive and perform the same operations with it that you would perform with tape. In summary, we see UBD instantly replaces LTO tape. It uses the same backup commands or software that you're already using with tape. 
It works with an IBM I, AIX, Linux, or Windows hosts. It includes its own deduplicated storage with replication. It can also be used as a gateway to your NAS, SAN, or dedupe appliances. UBD, the universal backup device, is available at laservault.com. UBD can be purchased as a turnkey appliance with its own deduplicated storage and replication. UBD also is available as software only for your own server. And last, UBD can be run as a virtual machine on your existing Windows server. For more information, please contact us at ubdinfo at laservault.com or come by our website where there's more detailed information available. Thank you for listening and have a great day.